I want to be a UFC champion. That is my ultimate goal. I want to be a UFC champion. I want to stand across from the very best, you know? I think we've made it so far already and we're not even close to being done yet. But yeah, I really want to see how far I can go. I won the belt for the AFC. I was signed to Invicta. I won the belt for them and now I'm signed to the UFC and I want to win their belt too. I'm Lauren's primary grappling coach, wrestling and jiu-jitsu. Uh, she has awesome striking coaches. Uh, one of her other striking coaches is actually a black belt in jiu-jitsu also. So it's really cool to have such a, an awesome um, team of peers to you know, bounce ideas off of and, and strategize and game plan with. So this is our mat room. Joe and I remodeled this house when we bought it. We remodeled most of the inside. And so we use this little like office den sitting area as our mat room. This is from The Ultimate Fighter. This was the championship fight in Alaska. This was my third fight. Um, and you can even like see on the poster just how different I look because you have to, I hadn't even stopped drinking yet, like at this point. And I really think that drinking and smoking cigarettes aged me 40 years. I'm all, and then when I stopped, I started reverse aging. So that's cool. This was, yeah, AFC 79. This is Willow Bailey, this is me. And that fight was super special. I, I think I won that fight more dominantly than I beat most people, really. It was a really bloody dominant TKO. Someone's first professional title, there it is. Yeah, and so there it is. That's the belt, it goes with this fight. Um, and this is when I fought Mariam Nakamoto for the Invicta Championship, and we won that one too. So there's the belt for that. Maybe someday we'll move this one over there, and hopefully we'll put a UFC poster there with the UFC belt above that one. That's the plan. This is a shadow box that Joe had made for me after my first UFC win. Um, it was my third fight in the UFC, but it was my first win. And we got a TKO finish and we won fight of the night for that. So that was like one of the best nights of my life probably. Um, so yeah, Joe had this made. These are the gloves I wore. These are the wraps and they look like dirty now, but it was all blood. It's all dried blood on there. That's dried blood, like the bra and shorts just look like filthy by the time we were done with it. But you can see in the picture, like it almost looked like I was wearing like a pink fight kit. And I was just so happy to get my first UFC win. We won the fight of the night bonus and Dana sends a letter to bonus winners. And so he sent this letter that said like, thank you for being part of an amazing night of fights. Congratulations on your performance and on your first UFC win. I know you worked hard for this. And then it just meant a lot to me. You know, he said as a way of saying thanks, we're sending you a bonus. This whole thing started <laughs> by me taking Max, my son, to a jujitsu class. So he was eight years old. And I took the adult class and loved it. I liked how competitive it was and everybody I knew was super freaked out by it. And uh, I didn't care, I couldn't help it. Like, I just loved it from the moment I started. And so I, I started going like every day and then it was like twice a day and I, and I quit smoking. It was like the first time ever that I had wanted to not smoke cigarettes anymore. Every time I thought about smoking a cigarette, I would think about somebody like whooping my ass because I was gassed. There were fighters at that gym too. And so I would take the jujitsu class and then I would sit afterward like on the side of the mat and I'd watch the fighters warm up and I just got it in my head I was like well maybe I could do a fight like just one I'll just do one to say that I did it and then like someday like my grandkids will ask me about it and I'll be able to tell them like yeah your grandma did an MMA fight one time so I did an MMA practice and they they were super mean to me they did not want me on that mat with them like they made a lot of really shitty comments um i remember everybody was like doing some jujitsu drills so they were all partnered up and nobody would partner with me and one guy looked at me and he was like why don't you go hit the bag over there like just did not want anything to do with the girl on the mat especially a new girl who did not know what was going on right i didn't know any technique yet i was just tough and kind of scrappy it just fired me up even more like i was like i'm gonna keep coming back and uh, i'm gonna get better and i'm gonna whoop your fucking ass someday like for talking to me like that you know hey see no problem okay you were staying tight your hips are driving in she's focused on the wizard sometimes like i'll get the grip and i'll let it go and that's when they start like fighting. It can you know? be a one at a time kind of thing too. If I don't have the right grip, it can be a, like turn my thumb, 
come get it. Like it doesn't have to be a, where do I put my hands? Like okay. just completely disconnected, you know? Okay. Like you can hold in tight and this one stays. I get that one in the right spot and move to it. Okay. I grew up in Alaska. I was born and raised there. I lived there for 30 years. I remember being a kid watching movies like Kickboxer. I wanted to be just like John claude Van Damme. I wanted to be a badass, like, and growing up, I just never played any sports. It wasn't super valued in my family. It's like we didn't watch sports really. Um, and so all the stuff that comes with athletics, like competitiveness, right? Always like trying to do your best, accepting a loss with grace and dignity, accepting a win with grace and dignity. Like all that stuff was completely new to me. <laughs> so it was all stuff that I had to learn kind of as an adult. And honestly, I had to learn it on a pretty public stage as well, because when I started fighting, I shot to the top super fast. I didn't, my first loss was in the UFC against Sarah McMahon. That was the first time I ever dealt with like a professional loss. And it was on a really big stage. There we go. There we go. Good to see you, buddy. I don't know. <laughs> 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 Shit don't even work. <laughs> that was a pretty violent hit there. Well, you got it. Well, Brian, do you know what I do for a living? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it it's a fist fight, Brian. Be <laughs> <laughs> one in a second. My dad died when I was 11, and he was killed in a plane crash. And I think I really dealt with um, a lot of like issues from that growing up, and all of it just kind of made the perfect storm where I was like ready to just run it till the wheels fall off. You got it. those arms out. Slowly work up to two feet if you can get it. I wasn't super into like hunting or fishing or like a lot of that outdoor activities that draw so many people to Alaska. So for me, um, a lot of my attention did go to partying with my friends. I dropped out of high school. I was really kind of going nowhere fast for a long time. Like I, I was your kind of typical teenage mom, high school dropout. Uh, living in a really small town, working, you know, a minimum wage job. I was on a struggle for a while. A lot of it was my own making from <laughs> drinking too much or using drugs, getting caught. My family, like, didn't want anything to do with me for a while. And that was around the time that I started fighting. So I would go to the gym and sometimes I would actually be drunk because I was drinking so much at that time and I was day drinking. I would get up in the morning and start drinking. Um, yeah. And so when Joe and I met, I had, I did fight and I had a couple fights, but I was drinking like as much as I could. And so I would usually stop drinking like three or four weeks before a fight. And it was the only thing that made me want to stop drinking was the, like, I have this fight to do. I need to make sure my cardio is right. I need to make sure that I'm in, you know, give myself the best chance to win this. The thought of like losing a fight in front of all my family and friends and peers was so terrifying. It was like the only thing that really, um, kept me sober during those years. So Joe has been a big factor in, um, in me staying sober. We met in Alaska. <laughs> we were sparring and um, he went to go shoot a double leg. Like he went really slowly too. <laughs> he changed his level very slowly, <laughs> stepped forward very slowly. And I was, I just had no idea what was going on. And so I put my hands out like that and jabbed him right in the eye. Poked me in the eye so bad. Like, a, knuckle deep. <laughs> I got a terrible black eye first time we met. Lord gave me a black eye. Yeah, and so I saw him the next day and he had a big black eye and I was like, ooh, did I do that? Sorry, <laughs> I feel really bad, sorry. And we just started hanging out, been friends ever since. <laughs> we, we were buds after that, we hung out all the time, practiced, trained together all the time. Yeah. And which that's, is a really cool like basis to build our relationship on, you know, like we were friends first, teammates first, before anything. And Joe and I were hanging out and we got along really well and I really wanted, like I wanted to be with him, I wanted to be in a relationship with him and I just knew that like a guy like Joe would never want to be with a girl like me doing the things I was doing. There was just no way it could be compatible. You know, he's like a successful, driven individual. <laughs> and, uh, I'm a driven individual, but I, I was a wreck. And honestly, I, I kept thinking that, like, if I want to be with a guy like that, I cannot keep acting like this. 
and that really did help me like in the very beginning to be like man I, I want to have a better life than this and if he's going to be a part of it then I cannot keep doing the things that I'm doing I've known for a very long time also like of course I fell in love with her you know I've also known that she was a really talented athlete and like could go far in this sport uh, she's worked real hard to prove me right <laughs> so uh, yeah I wanted to make sure that you know she showed up on time for practice and, and uh, was doing the things that was that were improving her life. Let it go. Don't get started. <laughs> thing I think Joe's ever made um, but when he asked me to marry him he presented me with this ring and he made this out of a piece of a fighter jet he had it engraved and it says uh, we will not fade on it yeah Joe literally made our wedding rings MMA saved my life. I really believe that. Like, without it, I don't know where I would be. I probably would be still in Alaska working a job I don't like, married to a guy that I don't love. You know what I mean? With none of the relationships that I have today. And not, also, MMA has taught me such a sense of like personal accountability. You know, like, you get out of it what you put into it. And that, that's been a huge lesson for me that's kind of. Um, leaked over into all other areas of my life, you know. If you just show up and do the work in front of you, like, there's a good chance you will have success. And that was, that became really apparent to me because of MMA. So I think that kind of stuff has leaked out into my attitude in really all aspects of my life. Sit. Good sit. Trying to be like a better athlete has led to me trying to be a better person. And, um, when I put energy into that, my life just gets better and better. I really believe that fit. All like the good things I have in my life are because I walked into a jiu-jitsu gym that day. <laughs> so the wheels come off, it's like, I think it just accurately sums up everything about me. <laughs> it's just all about jumping in 110% because I would hate to look back on this time and think that I didn't give my all to it.